So let's talk a little bit about the one shader two rule material. And it's a shader I created. Here are some examples of what this particular material can do. So you can see we can do wood, we can do stone and concrete and different metals and even fabrics and marbles and even skin. And one of the advantages of this shader is that it only uses a single tileable texture mat. So here we are and let's jump into this shader and take a look at what we have here. So I've built this shader intelligently with node groups. As you can see, it's based on the principled BSDF shader. And there's all these little node groups that you can use to adjust the shader. And we're going to walk through some workflows. Basically, the reason for creating this is I wanted to create a single shader that can use only one texture map and a variety of different scales of that texture map to create the roughness and the bump maps off of that. So that's really what we're doing here. We have scales for the color scale, the roughness scale, and the bump scale. And here's where we set our texture map, whatever texture we're going to use. Here's how we adjust our roughness. And here's how we adjust our bump. And then we have a color adjustment layer also. Sometimes it's necessary to adjust the color. So why one texture map? Well, there are a couple reasons. One is that if you're creating a complex scene, you only have so much GPU video graphics memory. And the more texture maps you use, the faster it gets used up. And in the case of a lot of models, you want to be able to use tileable textures, especially for interiors and exteriors. So if you use a different map for the normals and a different map for roughness and a different map for the base color, these maps start to add up really quick. And as it turns out, you can use the same map to actually extract a facsimile of a bump map and a facsimile of a roughness map. Now, I understand this isn't perfect, but I think when you look at the results, you see that this looks pretty darn good. Now, the other reason that I'm doing this is that I personally have found that photographic tileable textures are superior to parametric ones, or in fact, ones that you create using different noise nodes inside of Blender. Many times when I look at a texture, I can instantly recognize that it's not from a photograph, but it is actually generated procedurally. I would rather use photos. And since I'm always carrying my smartphone around with me, anytime I stumble upon an interesting texture, I'll take a picture of it and I'll use my favorite program, Pixplant to turn it into a really great tileable texture. So let's get into this. Here is our node graph. We're going to walk through each one of these controls to let you understand what they do. The first is the texture coordinate, and we can use UV, we can use object, or we can use generated. If the first control group is this CW scale, this basically allows you to set different scale densities for your texture image, for the color, for the roughness, and for the bump. And this becomes particularly important when you are trying to manage the roughness map. So let's show you what I'm talking about as far as this roughness map goes. Here is our object with the materials. It's really got the default settings, 111 for the scale for everything. Okay, so I want to only look at the roughness. So to do that, I'll come over here to my image texture, on off, turn that to zero, and then I'll move down to my bump texture, on off, turn that to zero. Now I'm looking only at the roughness for this particular object, and I'm actually going to change the off color here to something a little darker so I can see what that roughness might look like. Okay, there's the roughness map for that. And as I look at that, I can say, well, maybe I want to add a, a little more contrast to that. You know, punch it out a little bit. You can see now we're starting to get some more details. And I may want to up the roughness amount. If I hold the shift key down while I'm dragging here, I'm able to control that a little better. Let's keep in mind that roughness is going to affect how reflective our object is. So if I turn roughness all the way to zero, okay, so there's no roughness, so everything reflects, right? So that was somewhere around 1.48. So let's just go to 1.5. Okay, so there's there's a roughness number that we're going to like for this particular object. With that being said, I'm going to go and I'm going to look at the bump map also. So I'll go in here and I'll turn on the bump and I'll turn off the roughness. So here's our bump map. It's going to be always shown on a super reflective surface so we can really read it well. And let's say for the heck of it, I'm going to go ahead and hold the shift key down and up the distance to 0.25. And you can see the bump is actually more pronounced at this point. If you look at this, watch what happens when I turn on the roughness. 
So now I'm actually tracking the same exact bump with the roughness because over here in scale, they're the same. If I adjust the scale of the roughness, let's say I adjust it up a little bit, I'm now adding even more detail to the actual surface. Keep in mind that in RGB maps, doing something like this, we're gonna create a tileable texture that's noticeable. But when we put it in the roughness and combine it with the bump, we're not gonna see that repeatable tileable texture. So now that this is done, now if this says this is what I want, I'm gonna keep the bump scale in the same as the color scale because I want the actual wood grain to match up with the bumps. So the dark holes here to go down and the lighter areas to come up and that does work that way. And now you can start to see that we have a very interesting varnish, if you will, on top of this surface that has a different set of textures associated with it. It's not the exact same. This is the purpose of this particular material is that you can modify these so you can get more complexity in your models. Now, once I get into here, I may want to do some fine tuning. And in my case, I'm going to do that using the roughness amount. I'm going to actually move it down a little bit and I might make that contrast come down a little bit too. And, and I might come up here and move this down as well. So I've got a little less bump. So you can start to see, even if we move across the top of this surface, we have a very nice set of highlights that are matching quite nicely with the material below. Let's talk a little bit about our image texture here. This off color is the color that when we turn this off to zero, this is the underlying color. So I might want to match this as close as I can with the actual material that we're going to be working with if I want to actually see what that looks like. I can also change it to a different color and as I move this slider over it's going to actually tint our existing image with that color. And another feature is I can use the RGB curves. So if I want to say for instance I want more contrast in here I'll create a little curve to give me a little more contrast in my wood. And that's an S curve, right? Or I can go over here and say reset this and I'm going to take make it a little less contrast and I just squeeze it this way. So I'm just squeezing this to give us a little less contrast in our material. And if I ever want to move the saturation down, let's say I want to make this a more of a black and white material, I can do that this way by just adjusting the saturation. And if I want to make it a little darker, I can adjust that this way as well. These are all the adjust colors. So that's really the basis of how all of these controls work. So very quickly, you may notice that the actual scale of these textures is different from the cube to this meta blob object to this floor. If I select the floor and apply the scale, you'll see that it actually matches it so that we're all the same. Generated will give us the unique scales. So the generated is gonna use unique scales for each one of these. Object will maintain the same scale across all of the objects. So that's just something to keep in mind. Next, what we want to do is we want to show you how you create new materials with this material shader. So let's go ahead and we're going to hook this up to generated for now. And then I am going to create a great new metal material. So keep in mind that we're using the exact same material for both the image texture, the roughness and the bump map. But we only want to set that once. So how do we do that? Well, let's just go into the image texture. And as it says here, tab to select new file. So I'm gonna tab on this. I'm opening that node group and I'm gonna just go in here and I'm gonna go up to my metal tile. Here are all my metal tile textures and this one right here, scraps metal CW. I'm gonna open that image and then I'll tab out of here. And now we'll see that we have that here, but it doesn't look anything like metal. Why is that? Well, of course that is because in the principal BSDF shader, we have another switch, which is one for metal, zero for non-metallic. So let's just flip that over to one. Now we've got a metal texture. So that's a metal texture. Not particularly crazy about it, but it's a start. So let's get that fixed. Always we start off with turning off our RGB and let's go in and turn off our bump. So now we have the bump and the RGB off, off and we're only now looking at our roughness. And our roughness, as we've mentioned, is the thing that gives us the reflectivity. If I go down to zero, again, we're a perfect mirror or like a chrome. And with this set, I'm going to choose this color to be, maybe it's a little bit darker. Let's go back into our roughness and let's move the roughness up to a number that we may like. Something like that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to turn this off and go into our bump, turn it on, and we'll see we've got a pretty strong bump here, which is probably not what we want. So I'm going to make the strength of this somewhere down to 0 0.02 and our distance 0 0.02 as well. Okay, now I have just a little bit of bump. You can start to see in these reflections, you can see there is a little bit of bump there. Now when I want to add in the roughness. We'll get both of those, 
but we're getting them both exactly in the same spot, which again, I don't want. I'm gonna take my bump scale and I'm gonna increase it so that, or decrease it, I'm sorry. Something like that. Go back to my roughness. Let's turn it off. Let's look what the bump is doing. Yeah, I like that. And then we're gonna to go to the roughness scale, turn this on, and the roughness scale, we're gonna actually make that a little bit higher so I can get more of a, a scratchable surface. Okay, so you can see it's very repeatable and tileable over here. So what we need to do now is we're going to go in and we're going to turn on our image texture and it is going to be 0.5. And so now we have the image texture combined with the roughness combined with the bump to give us something that doesn't look so repeatable. Let's finalize this. First of all, this looks a little too scratchy galvanized. The way I can solve that particular problem is two ways. One is by adjusting our roughness contrast a little bit. If I do that, I'm going to come back out a little bit. There you go. And then I want to adjust the amount also. I want it to be just a little, a little more reflective. So there we have that. Now you can see that's good, but the dirt on the actual object is a little too strong. So I'm going to come over here and I want to slide this down and this up. And if I want even more control over that, again, I'll just go in and turn the roughness completely off. And I can exactly see what that dirt's doing right there. And I can turn the bump map off too, but that looks good. So I'm gonna turn the roughness back on. And now you can see we have a very nice, excellent metallic material. Let's do one more example. And this time we're gonna use a recognizable tileable texture. So again, I'll go into the image node, I'll hit the tab key. I'll search for a file. In this case, I'm gonna to go to brick tile and I'm gonna choose this brick 3.1 with the white grouting. It's loaded. First thing I'm gonna do is let's set the scale. So I'm gonna go grab a click here and drag and I'll put 0.5. We're at an object so they're all the same size. Next, we'll go in and we'll turn off our color texture and I'll go into my bump map and we'll turn that off too. So now all I'm looking at right here is my roughness. So here we're looking at this and we're seeing the reflectivity is being shown only on the bricks and not in the grout, which is what we want. While I'm setting this up, I typically like to start off by getting a number in my roughness amount that I think is going to be about right. So here we have just a little bit of reflectivity going on. Hold the shift key down, I'll drag it a little higher, get a little higher. And I think that looks about good. I might want to jack the contrast down just a little bit there. I think that looks pretty good. Now we'll go and turn this off and we'll go into our bump and we'll turn it on. Here's where we see the bump is actually facing outward because if you remember the grout was white. Let's just adjust this strength 0.2. Distance will do that 0.2 as well. Now I need to actually, if you look over here, we'll see that the grout is poking out. So I'll drag this invert slider all the way over and now the grout is going in which is good now i'm going to combine that with our roughness that looks pretty good so we're going to move over here and we're going to turn on our rgb map and that's our brick actually looks pretty good and we'll go over here to our value and i'm going to move that down just a little bit maybe down to 0.6 get a little darker and maybe just add a little bit of contrast to this and there is our brick so i hope you can see in this particular case, we wanted to keep all of these scales exactly the same because we didn't want to create any problems in terms of mismatches as far as the roughness and the bump map. Uh, sometimes I will mention that you can go in and really play with these bump maps even higher. Like you can really jack them up a little bit and you're going to get even a, more of a rough texture on there. And that's what we have right now. So this is the file that you're going to get when you download One Shader to Rule. As you can see, it defaults this CW Woodlight material. And so if we just select the box and we can go in here and here's our One Shader to Rule default material. But we can also go to like, say, uh, look at the plastic material. There's a plastic material here. And if I select all of these and go over here, I can just basically say copy material to all. So there's the plastic. I can look at carbon fiber copy material to selected. So you kind of get the idea. There are a bunch of materials in here. I'll be adding more materials as I go, but for now, this is a good start. Most of these are pretty small. They're uh, 1K or less materials. Now, what if you want to copy these materials into another scene? So now we've opened up a new Blender file. I'll go in my 
object mode. There's no, no materials added here. I'll go to the rendered mode. I will now go into file, append, and I'll go to my CW1 shader to rule blend. And then I can go into the actual materials and let's choose this wood light and we'll append it. And now we'll select this object and we'll select it to the wood light. And you can see that it comes in. So that's how you'll append it. Another way to do that is let's go back to our scene and let's just take an object like this plane and copy it and go in here and paste it. And you see now we have pasted that material and I can click here and now you'll see that I've got the CW carbon fiber as well in here. So that's two different ways that you can use the existing materials in this library. But I encourage you to download tileable textures. Play around with this for yourself. By the way, something I might mention is this CCO textures is a place you can actually go to find all kinds of textures that you can use and they're free. They're public domain. You can do anything you want. You can make products with them and sell them if you want. So it's a great, great website. It's called cctextures.com. So anyway, I hope this helps. This is a, a, a great free material shader. It's one I've been using to create my libraries of materials that I can just add to scenes. Hope this helps and we'll see you online. Bye.